Okay, good. Matt made it. Awesome. Okay, Matt, I'm going to introduce her. I'm going to introduce in just a few minutes. I appreciate you hopping on. Everybody else is slowly coming on. So we'll give them a okay. few minutes. I'll, I'll spotlight myself here and say hi to everybody in the chat. While we're waiting for everybody to hop on, do me a favor, please, and introduce yourself and okay. tell me where you're at and if you've bought a storage facility before or if you're completely new. Right. And um, and then you know we'll get started with having we have Matt Glass coming on. He's one of the students from Storage Nerds, and he is going to go over his storage facilities that he found. All right. So today we have a special guest coming on. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming to hang out with me again today. I'm Stacy Rossetti. I am your coach for uh, getting started in the storage industry. I'm here to help you get your foot in the door. So. If you are interested in, in uh, learning how to invest in self-storage, let me help you, right? Let me help you get started. And um, I typically, uh, up till now, we invested in, we've invested in um, million dollar or less properties. But uh, as of, like, I guess the end of February, the beginning of March, we have, we started a fund, which is called the Self-Storage Fund of America. And this fund is really to help us purchase one to three million dollar properties. Okay, so I have been where everybody is. I've been where you guys are all wanting to get started. And there is nothing wrong with buying small facilities because guess what? That's how I started out as well too. So that is what I'm here for is to help you get your foot in the door. Not everybody knows how to raise millions and millions of dollars. So, um, you know, let's get out there and look for better ones. Now, the last session, if you guys missed the last Monday night session, I talked about the market and what is happening to the market. And if you are going to be in my boot camp this weekend, then we will discuss this as well too. Um, so uh, welcome to all my new students. And um, you know, thank you for joining Storage Nerds and I look forward to working together with you. And I look forward to uh, helping you guys get that first facility under contract. <clears throat> we have a lot going on right now. We have so much going on, right? So we launched our our turnkey acquisitions program, which is where we help you find storage facilities. So I'm excited. You get to hire my acquisitions team to get out there and look. So we got a whole, we got a nice new group of people that um, that we're going to be working with to do that. And then we had all of the storage, the storage nerds doors were open and we brought in a whole bunch of uh, new students for that. So over the course of the next couple of um, months, I look forward to working with everybody. And, um, and so for everybody else, you guys can always go to stacyrosetti.com and <clears throat> click on storage nerds to check out all of the, the programs that we want. Go to stacyrosetti.com and that's where like everything is. You can find out about the courses, the coaching, the fund, the boot camps, the free trainings are there, everything's there. So that's like kind of your hub for all things self-storage investing and Stacy Rossetti, okay? So we have a whole bunch of new people here. So introduce yourself. So we have Sean from Knoxville, Tennessee is here. Okay, good. Um, I'm looking forward to dig into Knoxville because we have a student that um, that is lives in the Knoxville area and we are gonna start looking for properties for him to buy. So I'm gonna be digging into that market here in the next couple of weeks. We have Stan in Indianapolis. So welcome, Stan, looking for your first facility. Awesome, good, good area. The Midwest is a good, strong area right now. You know, everybody wants to move to the Midwest. So you're in a good location. And Felicia and Debbie are here. Welcome, welcome to Storage Nerds. I look forward to working with you guys and they're interested, they're from Colorado, they're living in Mexico. They're interested in buying a storage facility. I talked to so many international people this time. I'm, I'm going global here, man, it's awesome. So I talked to people from Mexico. I talked to somebody from Israel. I talked to, like I talked to somebody from France, so. There's a lot of people even outside of the country that want to invest in self-storage, you know, which is like so weird, you know, because we just, you know, small town country folk here. But everybody wants to understand this market because it's such a hot market right now. Now, what's going to happen in the next couple of years? Ah, ha, ha. 
that's what you got to learn about and understand and we're going to be talking about that in the boot camp so everybody that's coming to the boot camp this weekend will be able to discuss that um okay greetings from naples awesome and uh matt is here we're gonna hear from matt i'm looking forward to uh to uh hearing his story he's been in the coaching program for about a year now and he's working on a couple of facilities so very good and um <clears throat> sean uh sean is from uh oh sean is here from fair okay yeah from ohio so he just joined so looking forward to the store you know to meeting him get to know him joe from new jersey and uh joe from austin is here san francisco bay area is here arlington texas is here tamara from las vegas awesome so lots of storage nerd students here awesome so okay so we're gonna get started here in just a minute uh just a quick reminder uh to all the students that tomorrow is our mastermind so i'm gonna put that out here uh, so that everybody knows that you can hop on tomorrow and we'll all meet together so that's from 11 a.m to 1 p.m central time so make sure that you guys hop on to that and um i look forward to getting to know everybody over the next um couple of days until we see the until we have the boot camp and let's see finally um let's see what else i think that's really it you know uh let's get matt started so we can hear his story i'm gonna put put myself on um gallery here can you turn your video on matt or no i think i said no, it's, a, it's yes it's, no? you have it blocked i have it blocked okay great yes yeah, it says um, owner uh has, or the video because the owner has stopped it the host has stopped it oh great okay i don't know who the host is i'm the host i should be able to stop i should be able to turn your video on hang on um let me see hang on just one second Oh, sorry, Matt, you're the host. Can you turn your video on? Uh, no, there you I can't. go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so you're there. So let me spotlight you. And then I'll just, uh, I don't know if I can turn my uh, my video on or not. I don't know. I'll have to figure this out. I don't think I said I set it up properly or my team didn't. So, okay, good. Well, how are you? I'm good, Stacy. How you doing? Where are you at? 
Uh, I just got back to Tennessee two days ago, actually. Are y'all, did you actually, are you like moved over from Jamaica now? We have officially moved. Yeah, we, uh, we moved literally get back two days ago. So we're back in America for the first time to live in 10 years. So. Okay, cool. Good. Okay. Well, is it feel nice to be back at, back in America? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, it, it was well missed, um, but I see some folks like someone's you know checking in from Mexico. We did uh, we did a couple of year, we did three year assignment in Mexico, so uh, we we're up on the border in Chihuahua and Juarez. Um, missed that time very much. Some of my favorite food I've ever had. So um, yeah, we're back to the U.S. now and um, looking forward to uh, to tonight um, and um, kind of sharing how uh, how your program has helped uh, my family and I. Well, and we're going to get, we want to get into your deals today. So like, mm -hmm. tell everybody where, like where you lived and then also like why you decided to, uh, to get into self-storage investing. You bet. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I joined Stacy's program last February. Um, and so like Stacy, I've been in for over a year. Um, I didn't get my first deal in 30 in uh, in 90 days, but I got it in less than six months. Um, and so, as I mentioned before, and Stacy mentioned, um, my wife is a, is a diplomat. And so we've been living overseas for the last 10 years. Um, and so it was a little bit harder for me to uh, uh, drive for self-storage because uh, I couldn't drive in the U.S. So I was having to rely on Google, um, Google Maps and um, some family who was driving around. Um, and so uh, anytime I came back to the U.S. on a visit, um, I spent time, you know, collecting numbers and, and, and um, getting information and calling people texting people, um, uh, mailers and emails. Um, so I kind of went that whole route, but uh, long story short, uh, we bought our first facility um, uh, in uh, July of last year. So from February to July, it took us to get one under contract and to close on it. Um, it's a small town tertiary market um, outside Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, where my wife is from. So we had family here. So we came back to visit, I found this facility called the guy and said, hey, do you want to sell it? And he said, yeah, I sure do. And so uh, we made a cash buy on that one. Um, very small facility, just 26 units, um, 4,100 square feet or something like that. Um, and he hadn't raised rents in a long time. And uh, his expenses were low and I was able to keep them low because I had a reliable boots on the ground person who was close. Um, taxes were very comfortable. Um, it is, it, uh, I did not have it online. I was kind of accepting multiple payment options. Um, and it was, you know, it was an easy, easy purchase, easy close. Um, I waited about six or seven months until I raised rents and I just raised rents recently. And um, I lost nobody throughout that process, which was good. Um, and, and I, in my letter to them, if I knew how long I, that they had been renting from this unit or this facility, I told them this is the first time your rents have been raised since, you know, since 2018 or 2019. So just reminding them that I'm not, uh, I'm not the new owner just coming to get their money that, you know, things have changed in the last few years. So, um, so that was a cash buy, um, very easy, low maintenance, um, low maintenance facility, easy to do. Um, once again, fortunate to have family nearby. So that one was real quick and easy. Uh, then I went through kind of a period, a, a gap between um, that one approaching the next one, partly once again, as I said, because, you know, doing so from overseas is a bit more difficult. Um, so, uh, I, my family's down in Tampa, Florida, so I branched out and wanted to, um, add, uh, middle Florida, kind of country, Florida, Cal, Florida, orange, you know, oranges, Florida. Um, I like that market, um, and, um, wanted to go hard after that market. So we kind of did, um, I sent out mailers in that area, of course, started doing texting, overhead driving, finding numbers, uh, Google street view in order to make sure that I could get the get the phone number or see what the facility looked like even. Um, and, you know, as if you've, if you've been with Stacy at all or heard her stuff, you know, if they have a website, I would still contact them because sometimes it was just a Google My Business website. But if they, if they were running by, if they had storage or um, web solutions running, most of the people were not interested in selling, but um, found a facility in middle Florida um, and went under contract with it. It's a larger facility. Um, the owner and I uh, went back and forth for a good while in conversation. Um, it was not for sale. He actually, he actually responded to a mailer that I sent. Um, so then we started an email conversation back and forth, but he was actually in the process of getting uh, married. And so he said, let me, let me just pause my conversation with you and I'll, I'll talk to you after my honeymoon. I said, okay, fine. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest with you. He kept trying to find some other stuff. And then um, uh, a little while later, he reached out to me and said, hey, I'm back in town. Are you still interested in this facility? 
So I started, you know, I put it in Stacy's uh, evaluator, started collecting um, information on it. Um, and I got really excited when I went into um, uh, Radius Plus and saw the numbers for the area. Um, and I got even more excited when I started doing some overhead views of the property um, and saw that there was a, um, a subdivision across the street um, and there was a 55 and older community uh, 1.1 miles away. Um, and so for those two reasons, we decided we were gonna go after that facility. Um, I say we, me, my wife and I, we kind of, um, she's the, obviously has the W2 job um, and I spend my time doing real estate investment. Um, I have, we have two little boys, eight and four. Um, and so I homeschool the oldest one. Um, so if I'm not homeschooling him, I'm trying to find a self storage facility to buy. So, um, so we uh, got under contract with that one. And for as easy as the first one was to buy, the second one was the complete opposite. Um, we chose to do an SBA loan. Um, and I don't, I don't regret it yet, um, but I do know that the, the time investment was um, as bad as if you, if you read any Facebook groups or if you're in any groups or hear any podcasts about folks uh, who are buying with SBA, um, it really is a long, drawn out, painful process. So um, it took forever to get across the closing line and we actually just closed on it um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we closed on that one. Um, I have yet to see it. Um, I'm actually flying to Florida on Friday to check the place out. Um, I hired my boots on the ground person three days ago um, and have been, you know, basically um, pretending to be the manager, which uh, Pete's very good at. You know, I, I had them give them my phone number and pretend I'm the manager of the facility, not the owner. So I've had a few people reaching out to me trying to get a unit or trying to figure some things out. Um, I wouldn't call this facility mismanaged, but I would, I would call it um, undermanaged, uh, which was ironic because they actually have a uh, live-in full-time manager, um, which we are um, we're going to get rid of that um, because of uh, it's not necessary. Uh, it's fully fenced. It's, uh, it's got a three-acre lot, so it's fully fenced. And um, the one downside is that the front gate has been basically destroyed, and so we're going to have to come out of money. So I've come out of pocket some money for the, to get the front gate fixed so they can be um, uh, an automated entry. Um, so we're working towards that right now. And, you know, uh, that stuff is backed up. So I have someone going over there and opening and closing the gate right now. Um, so it's, it's messy right now. But um, once again, if you're if you stick with this for a little while, you'll hear the first 90 days of purchasing a new facility is complicated. Um, and you know, weeks into that 90 days and it's been complicated, nothing, nothing catastrophic. Um, cause the other side that I'll say that I've heard a lot and it brings me some peace and it helps me sleep at night is that, um, generally speaking, self-storage, uh, uh, tenants or renters or, you know, they're not really stressed out about who's getting their money or what's going on with that. So I have found that to be pretty true, um, which I'm obviously thankful about because switching over from one system to another system, switching from one owner to a new owner, switching from an onsite manager who, you know, has some of a relationship with these folks to, um to uh, a website you have to you know you're gonna you want to you want a facility i mean a unit with us go to the website here's how you do it sign the lease spend the money um and then then you're locked in so uh, so that was the second facility um you mean stop stacy or keep going and add talk about the yeah, let me let me ask you some questions before i get too far ahead i'm ready okay good okay so for the first facility can you tell everybody how you found that this is yeah. a small one. Correct. Yeah, it's a small facility, 26 units. Um, it is in my in-laws town. So um, they, they live uh, four miles from it probably. Um, and so it's one of those ones where when I came to visit them during one of our trips home, um, I was driving around trying to find it um, and found it. It was not on Google. So there was, there was no address. It was not on Google My Business. If you click on it, uh, it actually had the, the coordinates, right? It did not even have an address on it. So uh, I found that one by driving around when I came to visit family. Okay. And how did you fund that one? Uh, cash buy, straight cash buy. Um, he how wanted much, to close. What did you pay for it? 60000 So okay, I paid for, 20, uh, for 26 units or 26 what? units. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and we're going to. Does it have up. like extra land on it or was it just like just the units itself? No, just the okay. units itself. It's, it's in, it's like in the little downtown area. And so there's no room for expansion. Um, but closing in on year one, all expenses paid, we're going to get um, approximately between, between 15 and 20% cash on cash return. 
um, which I'm thrilled with. I'm happy with it. We have our expenses low. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of the work myself because for 26 units, I'm not going to pay someone to do something I can do myself in that regard. Um, for the big Florida facility, we're, we're on storage and we have a website and I'm coming out of pocket, you know, to not have to deal with all those customers. But for the small, for the first small one and, and you know, to fast forward a little bit, we added a second small one actually here in Tennessee as well. Uh, and it's very similar to the first one, uh, except that it's actually an owner financing purchase. Yeah. So, um, so can you talk a little bit about how you like, how you managed the first one when you were just by itself now without the other one? So people have an idea, because a lot of people do ask me like, you know, is it worth buying a small one? Mm -hmm. Um, my wife and I debated on that actually for a good while. Um, she was not interested in buying a small one because as Stacy said, there's no land. It's, it's really hard to scale. Um, when you increase the rent on 26 units, even if you increase it 20%, it's not that much money. You increase the re you increase your rent on 150 units, 20%, all of a sudden your cash flow is really dropped up, um, driven up. Um, so the, the, what we kind of decided on this one was uh, this is going to, one, I, I ran the numbers through your evaluator and I knew I was still going to make money on it. So this is not, you know, what they call a home run deal. This is a solid double. Um, but my cash on cash return makes it look like a triple for me. I mean, I don't know what everyone else, of course, their cash on cash returns are getting, but 15 to 20% I'm content with for the fact that I spend very little time doing it. So, um, you know, we went through the process of getting it on Google. Once we got on Google, um, we got, you know, obviously they got a couple of reviews, um, got the, got some photos up there. Um, I'm managing our Google, my business page. And so it's, you know, it's once again, it's a small tertiary market. There's one legitimate facility in town. Um, the rest of them are kind of, I mean, that one's a mom and pop one, but the rest of them are very much mom and pop. You know, they're, they're between 20 units and 50 units. Um, the biggest one in town is probably 150 units. Um, <clears throat> And he's not, uh, he's not raising his rents, which is fine because he's full. So I'm able to raise my rents. I'm actually, his is fenced, gated, fancy and nice. Mine is not, but he's full at a lower rate than I'm charging, even though um, my facility is not as nice as his. So that's nice because he doesn't want to raise his rents. Oh, that's what, okay. oh, what's the population of that town? Boy, uh, that's a good question. Um, I would guess, I would, I, there's no way it's 4,000 people. I don't know. Okay. So just a, just a small town. So small town. You, should, you, should, yep. you should have no qualms about going into a small area and just to get your first deal. And that's the thing is like, I wanted to learn how to run a facility before I bought a big one. And that's kind of what we did. You know, I, I spent, you know, basically eight, eight, nine months kind of self-managing this facility and realizing, okay, here's the questions that people are going to ask. Here's what people are kind of like. And the, the one we bought in Florida is also a tertiary market. Um, I mean, I'm talking about we're in the country, it's like 700 degrees in this time of year and there's no airflow. And um, it's just, you know, there's a highway that runs through the middle of the state. We bought a facility on that highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then, so how do you, uh, how do you manage such a small facility? I mean, to, to keep the cost down. Um, do we, I mean, our expenses, we have four line items for expenses. Basically we have, of course, we have taxes, of course, and, uh, insurance, no doubt. And then we have had very, very, very few, um, repairs that we've had to spend on it. So that's nice. I bought a banner, um, and put it up. And then, um, you know, the only other fee, the only other expense we have right now is our um, credit card expense. Cause I run it through, um, through PayPal. And so, you know, you obviously, if it's a $60 charge, you'll get $58 and PayPal gets $2. So other than that, those are the only expenses that we have, except for um, we joined the um, uh, the Better Business, you know, the, the local community um, small business association um, because they actually rented a unit from us. And so it felt like it was the right thing to do. And uh, of course we get free advertisement, well, free advertisement, I meaning we get ongoing advertisement through them just through our registration fee with them. So. Um, simple process and not uh, not something that I regret doing at all. And of course, I like to keep things, you know, I'm, I'm, I like mom and pops. I like to keep things local. I like to help things grow and help local communities grow as well. Okay, cool. Good. Okay. All right. So for the next one that you found, for the next one that you got under contract or closed mm -hmm. on, how mm -hmm. did you find that one? Can you talk about all the different marketing that you did that led up to that? Sure. Yeah, that one, um, I started with just um, Google Maps from overhead. Um, I, I spent many years living in Florida, and so I know the area. 
Um, I know this kind of the, the small towns in Florida, in the middle of Florida, because my, my family's from there, my dad's family's from there. And so I used to fish um, 12 miles from this facility that we bought. So I spent every Thanksgiving at this one lake that's close to there. And so I knew the town that was close to there and there's, you know, six or seven small, I mean, small, it depends on what your picture is, but um, in Florida, they're considered small towns, of course. And so um, I started doing the overhead image and just scanning and scanning and scanning. And uh, this facility is large enough that as soon as it uh, showed up on my list, um, I was able to see what it was. Um, they had a website. Um, it was a dad and son who um, are local investors there in middle Florida, but they focus on, um, uh, uh, let's see, uh, they focus on um, multi-unit, multi-family unit properties. But uh, they, I guess, for whatever reason, found this deal three years ago or found this facility three years ago and purchased it. Um, and then they kind of just took their hands off of it and let their, um, let their person kind of run with it. Um, and she, um, was not too concerned with making it fantastic or great. And so, um, they, uh, kind of let it, let it go down a little bit, I guess you could say. And, um, once I contacted them, he said, well, it's not for sale, but, um, we want to take that money invest in somewhere else. So, you know, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about you buying it. And, um, and that's how that process started. So I was doing Google overhead. I would do the street view and I could look at it. I could see that it was fenced. I could see there used to be a gate. I could, you know, get a rough estimate for how many units it was. And then we started the conversation. So I was able to get, you know, like I said, he was, they have a website and they use web, web self storage. And so he was able to provide me the unit mix and what they're charging and their, you know, their physical occupancy, which is of course different than their, their economic occupancy, but um, it gave me a good idea what the facility is worth. And then when I saw his expenses, that's when I was really um, kind of clicked into this one because I was looking at his line item expenses, knowing what mine were and having, you know, talked to Stacy about, kind of what, you know, I guess you could call them small, medium facilities, what your expenses are with those. And I knew he was paying way too much for multiple things. And so um, his, his, his uh, rates for rentals was actually pretty close to street market value, but his expenses were way too high. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, I think it's, uh, it's below a five um, for a square foot per capita. Um, which for floor in the three mile and the five mile radius, and this is a tertiary market, so those are the ones you're looking at. Um, and so for Florida, below a five was was a lock deal for me. I said, okay, let's move forward with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think Florida is a really good area. Just think about like in the area that you're at, where are there markets that are just growing so fast that the demand can't keep up with it? And this is essentially what what happened in Florida. So we, we find a lot of properties like this. Yeah. So, okay. So, all right. Marketing, how did you, and you did some deal analysis on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about funding. So mm -hmm. how did you come up with using an SBA loan and what happened with that? Yeah. Uh, basically we had, we had some capital available and I wanted to use the least amount of capital possible because we weren't done investing. Um, prior to doing self-storage, uh, we have two cabins in the Smokies. And so we've done, we do short-term rentals. We have two cabins in the Smokies. Um, we started that in 2019 and 2020. We purchased two of those once again while living in Jamaica. So um, those are doing well, but we wanted to diversify a bit and didn't want to have all our eggs in the same basket. And I, I've always been interested in self-storage and um, I was not um, uh, accountable enough. And so joining Stacey's group really helped me get to that point of, um, you know, knowing these calls are coming up and having a conversation with people like, you know, what are you doing? Like, what are you really doing? Are you, are you really, you know, sending out mailers? Are you really cold calling? Are you really sending texts and stuff? So, um, but to answer your question, sorry, I got off track there. So we chose the SBA loan because I wanted to put down as little as possible so that we had more capital available for more purchases in the future. And so how did it go? Okay, so an, an SBA essentially looks at like income producing properties. Did this property produce enough income, income or how did it work with the terms and what, it, what did they come up with? Yeah, um, so uh, if, you've been, if, you know, if you've been around, there's a couple of big players in this game, one of which is Live Oak, ba Live Oak Bank in North Carolina. And another person, the other person who had a run of mine was uh, Kavi, who's, uh, you know, Stacy can get you the contact information I'll have in front of me, but um, he's kind of like, a, I guess, almost like a lender broker. Um, so I, I, I presented both of them, uh, both Live Oak Bank and Kavi with the deal. And then Kavi, of course, I, um, 
shops it to a, a handful of banks. And so uh, when it was all said and done, the two packages came back and they were very similar. Um, but I liked um, Live Oak better. And to be honest with you, at this point, I don't even remember why. No, I think may maybe the interest point, maybe the interest rate was a, was a tick lower or something like that. I don't, I don't remember what was. I mean, they were very similar, but um, I chose Live Oak and um, the customer service I had with them through the process was very good. Um, it was, like I said, a long, painful process, but, you know, I was able to get into this purchase with only 10% down versus, you know, you're looking, I think, you know, traditional, you might be at least 20% down. And if you do what Stacy does, of course, you're looking at different things with a higher interest rate and, you know, quicker refinance and stuff. But this one was cash producing, cash flowing as is, even with his numbers. And so, you know, I did multiple phone calls with Live Oak and, you know, they want to see a business plan and they want you to talk through how you're going to make it better uh, because they just want to, they want to fund good deals. And so I put together a business plan and um, spoke to them about um, the changes that I foresee us making in the first year. Um, and, you know, they were, they were happy with that um, and happy enough, you know, to, to say, okay, let's move forward with this. So um, it took forever. It really did. Um, so much back and forth. And, um, you know, I, it saved me a lot of money. And so as far as putting money down, so that's why I keep telling myself, that's how I was like, okay, I can get so what? So how long did it take to close? How, how, how long did you have it under contract for? Um, five months, I believe. Yeah, because I've been telling people, if you want to do SBA, it's going to be yeah. like four to six months to close. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's so what did, what did the seller say about that? He was okay with? They, they were okay with it. Um, I, I was, you know, I was communicating with them what was going on. Um, thankfully, because they do business in the state that we're buying, some of the delay was actually not Live Oak's fault, not my fault. It was actually the state of Florida's fault and their backup due to COVID. And so um, at least one month of actually the, of the closing, proce closing process was um, the proper registrations within the state of Florida. And so because they are a business owner down there, they, they, they know I'm not making that up. They know I'm not, it's not my, it's not my fault. Um, and so they were patient enough with that. Uh, they were getting antsy at the end, um, no doubt, because it had been five months and I would sue. And so once we finally zoned in on a closing date, um, you know, we were able to tell them that and, you know, Live Oak confirmed it. And so then they were going to 1031 the money into something else. And so that once, once that got established and they found something at 1031, that's kind of when they said, okay, we need to close by this date. And um, thankfully we, we did. Um, and we, I think, I think we closed five or six days before we left Jamaica. And so, um, it was a whirlwind of, you know, you have to overnight all the stuff and thankfully I have notary services available to me to have all the stuff notarized, but, um, it saved me a lot of money to put down. So I have more money for my next deal. That's why we, so went. how much did you end up having to put down? So I, tell minutes. us the price, the price of this and stuff. Yeah. So this one, this one is, uh, eight fifteen is the purchase price. And so we put 81 down or 82 down at 10%. That's like ten percent. I mean, that's awesome. Yep, got ten percent down, as well as um, uh, they they didn't cut you a check for some working capital, and so your loan is you know you know we put ten percent down and then um, got a little bit of money back to basically that's what I'm going to fix the gate with, and so uh, I'm not going to be in the hole so to speak um, out of the gate, um, and I got three months of um, interest only payments uh, to start out, so I have a nice opportunity to you know collect funds and build. Um, build uh, the money in the account in case something else goes wrong. The good news was one of the reasons, another reason I was interested in the facility is they had just resealed the roofs. And so all the roofs have been sealed within the last year, um, which is not terribly expensive, but it's not cheap. Um, and they had replaced, I think it's 165 units and they had replaced over a hundred doors, uh, which if you know how much doors cost, that costs a good amount of money as well. So Mm -hmm. that's good all right so you got some stuff done and then how much did they end up like did you just tell them you know i'm gonna have to put a new gate in so i'm gonna need 10 grand or like how did that work you know it's actually they they to be honest with you either i hadn't done the homework or this was their own thing or whatever but like they they brought that idea to me they said do you need some working capital in this um and i was like not necessarily but once again it it kept that money in our account to invest on something else and so yeah so i'll take some working capital you know i got a um a solid interest rate because this thankfully we got locked in before the april 1st and all that stuff so um, i was definitely below the the current interest rates um so that was you know uh, a relief 
Um, that was another reason I didn't want to extend out one more time because if we extended one more time, we would have been into the new um, interest rate period. And so it would, it would have automatically been driven up. Um, so they brought the idea of do you need some working capital? And so um, I said, yeah, I could, you know, they, and now somehow they produced the number and they said, is this number okay with you? And it was, it was really close to what I expected the gate repair to be. Um, and so I said, yeah, that's fine. And we went with it from there. Okay, cool. So, I mean, I guess, yeah. So if you're, I mean, if they can really do 10% down, it's totally worth it, but you just have to be able to wait for, for five or six months. Yeah. Yes, yes. And um, the, the seller has to be patient. Uh, this was off market. If it had it been on market, this would have never worked because they would have not waited. If it had been an on market deal, they would have quickly cut ties with me and take I mean, this is a cash buy for many people, not for me, but for many people, this is a cash buy um, or a 50% down buy. And so they would have taken their money and closed in 30 days and I would have been lost or 45 days, probably not. I just would have been, you know, I would have missed it. Um, but because it was an off market deal, um and because you know we had started the conversation a long time ago and kind of i would say we built a relationship we built a rapport for sure um and i think that allowed him you know, the sellers to be a bit more patient with that process but yeah 10 percent mm -hmm. down for real like it's it's done and that's what we that's got really out of it with, good. So. i think that's really good so you just have to be patient and then if you know you want to do an sva loan honestly i would just put like six months and tell the seller like look it's going to take six months just so you know, because I think over time, it's going to take even more and more time. It's going to take a lot longer to close. So you got right. stuck right into the part, like right into the time where they're doing all the loan, you know, modifications, changing the numbers, increasing them, and people are just starting to freak out and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, obviously in my, in my dream world, I would have found this deal six months earlier because, uh, you know, they were waiving SBA fees, for example. Mine does not. I have the fees on mine. Um, and that's, you know, for this loan is around seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. So it's not cheap, but it's built into the loan. So I didn't come with that money for closing. Um, but uh, one year ago today, SBA loans, there were, there were no fees for SBA loans. They were fantastic. So I mean, it was so much better uh, terms than they are currently. Um, but basically they just, they, they, so many people jumped on this. I think they had, they started making the adjustment, of course, with inflation and everything, they started making some adjustments. Um, so, you know, 18 months ago, 12 months ago, this deal would have looked even better, um, but it wasn't there for me and I couldn't get it closed in time. So it, it is what it is. Um, you know, looking at my numbers, obviously we're, we're two weeks in, so I, I, don't, I don't know the real numbers yet. Um, but, uh, and as I said, I haven't seen the facility. I'm going down Friday to see it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, most, of, most of it I'm looking forward to seeing. So um, that should be fun. You know, it'd be, it'd be uh, since I'm back in the US now, um, and I have access to getting down there. If I need to get down there and, you know, quickly I can, um, living abroad, of course, that was much more complicated, especially during COVID because we were in Jamaica, for example, and the island was actually closed for a year. So there was no inbound traffic for a year. And so we spent a year, um, on Island and the first facility that we purchased was during that period of time. So I sent, you know, uh, I had some notarized papers sent in and I wasn't at the closing and that was okay. You know, that's no problem. You don't have to be at closings anymore. Um, and obviously I wasn't at this Florida closing either. So. Yeah. And the good thing is that the Tennessee one, you have family to take care of it. So now Correct. do you have family nearby for this one? Or are you going to be managing? How are you going to manage this thing? Cause you're yeah, going to be so in Tennessee. I, yeah, yeah. I have, um, so it's going to, it's almost, it'll be, there'll be a website and using storage as far as the renting goes. Um, my boots on the ground person I found, um, through, uh, through a Facebook group for the town that it's in. Um, there was like either, I tried two different groups. One was like garage sales group. And so I posted my information in there. And then there was another one that was something along the lines of um, almost like a, like a side hustle or side job. Uh, Facebook group for people looking like they don't want full-time employment. Obviously, Florida has many retirees and they're looking for an opportunity to make some money. Um, and, and I found it and I posted my information in there. I cleared it with the moderator first to make sure that it was okay to post. And then she's like, yeah, go ahead and post it. And so I probably got 15 responses. I read through them and replied to all of them. And I got, after that, I got probably six responses again. And then I cut it down to three people based on the responses that I received. So I have a, a great uncle who lives 10 miles from the facility. And so I did a phone interview with all three of them last week. Um, and then I had my uncle actually meet them in person to see what these 
what the people are, what they're like, you know, what the, like what um, what presence do they have? Um, are they are they going to be a good face of my business down there? Um, and he came back and said, I think this is your winner. Um, the guy is terribly overqualified, um, but he's looking for something to do, and he's happy to do this, and he's bringing good ideas to me already, which is good. Um, and so that's how we found him. All right, good. So now, how are you going to manage everything? Like, tell it to everybody kind of like, you know, are you going to be, you're going to be using storage, you're going to be doing what kind of marketing or, and actually, can you give the demographics of the facility? Because you can really tell it's, I know it's how many doors, how many square footage, this kind of thing. Yeah, so it's around, um, it's 165 units. Um, square footage is around 19,000. Um, demographic uh, is uh, tertiary market in middle Florida. Um, I think the square foot per capita, like I said earlier, is less than five in the three mile. Um, I'm sorry, in the five mile, less than three in the three mile. Um, management wise, we're using storage. Uh, that's our property management software. Um, Guy is the one who built our website. So the folks that have been on before, I'm sure you've heard Stacy talk about him. Um, if not, he's the guy that we chose to do. Um, he's great with, um, you know, obviously getting the SEO out there. The good news for me right now is, um, you know, when I have my consultation with a guy, he's got this little nine, nine cube chart that looks like the Brady Bunch thing, actually. And it, it shows you where you're doing well as far as SEO and that zip code and on that and those searches go. And so of the nine squares, eight of ours are green, meaning we couldn't we're, we're winning those squares. Right. So in this block around of the area, we were winning on all the searches because of uh, because of the fact there weren't any others in the area. Um, and so there was one that was, um, I guess maybe yellow, I think, um, because it was kind of halfway between our facility and its other facility. Um, so storage is the answer guys website. Um, and I'm still going to be very hands-on, uh, in the, um, uh, when I need to be, but I'm going to rely on the property management software and the website and, um, those experts to help take care of those things. Who's going to answer your phones? Uh, so yeah, so the um, we're, we're let, as as we're less than 500 units total, that there will every facility because I think I'm going to put my two small ones on storage as well. Um, every facility is going to have a local phone number, and that local phone number can ring through to either um, a uh, recording, meaning like a uh, a voicemail, or they can message through like the bot thing, like this like a Google bot basically. And so I'll get a ping on my phone. To my personal number screen through this other number this is somebody's hey i want it i want a 10 by 10 do you have any 10 by 10s or how much are your 10 by 20s and so um you know basically i'll monitor my phone and jump back on them when i can and let them know hey here's what i have um we are not doing a call center at this point um if it gets to where we're losing business or we feel like um that plan is not working or starts taking up too much time then we'll switch to a call center but um call centers are not cheap um, and, you know, Stacy's talked about this quite a bit and other folks in storage nerd have talked about this. Um, sometimes call centers aren't good. Um, you're not getting, people have talked about they're not getting a lot um, for their money. And, um, you know, if we get, you know, basically once we buy one, maybe two more, um, I think we're going to switch over to what, what Stacy's doing and have basically one um, central person who answer calls certain times, of, uh, you know, certain times a day, certain times a week. Um, and let that person, you know, have access to our, um, to our back end stuff and know what's going on in our different facilities and then go from there. So with your third facility, how big is this? Uh, it's also oh, very tell small. Tell us about this one. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's um, ironically, uh, we, we went under contract and, and closed on that facility in 30 days. Um, so while we're working on closing the Florida facility, this facility I've actually had my, my, my eye on for about three months. Uh, I say that because it's only three months old. It's a brand new build. Um, I, through my family, knew who the builder was. I approached him and said, I'm, I'm interested in your facility. Um, he said, okay, here's my price. And I said, no, thanks. I can't do that. Um, and so then uh, it's, I went back to him and said, uh, will you, will you own or finance? Because I'm, I was basically willing to give him what he had in the property. For, uh, I came back to him with, here's my price, meaning he had built um, 18 units and seven parking bays. And so it was covered parking bays. 
Um, I believe that the parking bay is going to be something that coming down the road that actually grows quite quickly. This is very close to um, a lake and whitewater rafting and camping. And so I believe um, that there's a nice little uh, market there for that. And the closest covered facility is about six miles away, but I'm actually closer to the lake. And so I think that's going to have something to do with it. Uh, this one actually has three acres. And that's the other reason we purchased it is we're, um, uh, we're close. Actually, we're, 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 that unit's completely full. Those 18 units are full and I got five of the bays full. So basically on that facility, I have two empty spots. Um, and what's, what's very, uh, What's good is um, uh, when I closed on the first Tennessee facility um, and I filled that one up, I started referring people who called me because the new owner that this other, this, the second facility was not on Google. However, I was, and so I was getting phone calls. And so every time someone called me, I would send uh, my, I would send them the, the other owner's name and here's his phone number. And so I was kind of hoping and it worked out while I was filling our facility before we owned it. And so uh, I was referring people over to that facility. Hey, you know, call, call this guy over here. He's got, he's got a unit. I know he's got a unit. He's got a 10 by 20. He's got a 10 by 10. And so um, we filled it up. It's now full. And so literally today I was talking to a local bank here about um, adding on. So we're going to add another either 18 or 20 units. We haven't decided yet, but um, in the next few months, we're going to add on, we're going to start the process of adding on another 18 to 20 units. Okay, cool. Good. All right. So um, tell everybody like wh how, what, tell about, talk about the owner finance terms. Okay. Yeah. So um, they, I don't know, it's kind of, it's, it's, they're not, they're, they're, neither one, nobody won in this owner financing terms. He got what he wanted in the sense that it's a 10 year loan uh, without a balloon and a fixed interest rate. The interest rate's higher. It's, in, it's actually six. So we got in at a higher interest rate but um, in order to get in that interest rate, he had to bring his price down. So you're kind of just moving money around if you're like, oh, it's this or it's this. Like in the end, um, we're happy with what we pay for the facility. Um, we know right now our cash flows as is without an issue. However, when we add on the 20 units, uh, obviously more or less the cash flow is going to double. And so now we're looking at, you know, once again, a, a double as far as baseball terminology goes on the investment. Um, so he went a little bit of money down. So we put some money down and then um, got reached, you know, tenure um, with a fixed interest rate um, without that. And so his, his thing he would not compromise on was there was no early buyout. Um, so in other words, we carry the, the term the entire period. Uh, we carry the loan the entire period. Or if we do want to buy out early, uh, we have to give him what the end amount would be. And so basically he's going to get, he's going to make interest on it. Um, so he was content to make the interest that he's going to make over the next 10 years. Um, after running the numbers on it as is, I knew that it was going to clear, you know, money every month, not as good as the first small one that we have in Tennessee, the first small facility, but it was going to clear good enough. Um, and once we get that second, uh, building built, um, then all of a sudden we're looking at, okay, we're, you know, we're making money again, making real money again, not just some money. Okay, so how long is it going to, I mean, what do you think? Are you going to add on to this, first of all, number one? Are you going to add on? And number two, how long is it going to take for you to start making some money on this thing? And why is yeah, that worth it to you? Yeah, we're, we are we are going to add on. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, we are already in, in talks with a bank here to add on. They have all the information they need. Um, we should have that approved um, probably in the next two weeks. Um, it's worth it to me because it's three acres on the corner of two large local highways and it's servicing an area um, that is not growing quickly, but for a tertiary market, it's growing in a direction that I like and it's growing in a direction of income that I like. I mean, the people that are buying in the area this facility is are commuting a little bit or they're working from home. And so they're making, um, they're making more money than, than the rest of the people in the area. And so they're probably gonna, they, hopefully they'll have a boat, hopefully they'll have an RV. And I have a place for them to put it. Hopefully they, you know, they, um, they need some storage for their, you know, son or daughter who went off to college and is coming back now. Um, and, and I have, you know, we have a uniform. So, um, so we are going to add on. Um, it's, it's making money now. It's just not making huge money right now. But uh, 
it is a buy and hold. It is a long-term investment. It is um, three acres on a fantastic location um, that I believe has the you know potential to really grow and to expand uh, going forward. So it's not we're not in a hurry on this one. It's not as pressing that we um, uh, make fi fa fantastic returns straight away, um, but we will make good returns. I feel confident in that. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have gone down the route of buying it. But the truth is, I mean, honestly, you know, the market, where the market's at right now, it's very hard to find deals that are like totally awesome. Most people, the deals that they're buying are like good purchases that are long-term holds that you can maybe value add by increasing the rates or value add by adding on. And this is honestly how it's going to be. And the reason why is because the market is just so saturated and there's so many buyers, you know, and, and also it's a, it's a seller's market right now, you know? So there's nothing wrong with looking at deals the way that you're looking at it, which is, yeah, maybe I don't cash flow as much as I wanted to right now, but over time, this thing is going to appreciate and I'm going to value at it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's why we bought this. I mean, if it were, if there was no land available for this one, I would not have purchased this one. Um, and this is also, I mean, I don't know where you're at with this, you know, as far as investment goes, but this was kind of a, a gut purchase. I've known, I've seen this piece of land and I was interested in building on it already. And this other guy did that. Fantastic. Cause he's actually a, he's a builder by trade. And so I, I know, like my family knows this guy, my, my wife's family knows this guy and he builds good stuff. And so I didn't have to build it. Um, so I bought what he built and then I filled it up for him basically. And then I bought the facility from him. <clears throat> yeah, and so so somebody asked, like, how do you value a, uh, you know, how do you value a storage facility? I mean, essentially, everybody says it's NOI and cap rate, but the truth is, is that the way you value it is based on your own risk level and like what mm -hmm. you want to do with it, you know. So it may not may it may not, you know, it could be a a low cap rate in a in a secondary or tertiary market but the question is can you raise the rates i mean can you value add the property can you add on so really determining commercial and determining how you're going to evaluate the commercial property is key you know you, commercial real estate investing is just not black and white it's just not anymore it just can't be all right so you have to make sure that you understand value add and opportunity I think a lot of it has to do with you know what what that person wants from their investment, right? Like um, we we have all of our assets that we own cash flow, and so I don't need everyone to cash flow as a home run. I really don't. Like they're they're holding items, they're they're growing items, um, and I, we're we're happy with the returns that we're getting. Um, we think you know if everything goes right, we do feel that Florida is going to be um, uh, a a really strong cash flowing item. Um, and once we add on to the second facility, I feel the same way about that one. Um, the first facility, it is what it is. It's a small facility. Um, I have no problems from it. The, like the, the tenants there are extremely low maintenance. Every time someone moves out, um, I increase the rate ten to ten dollars, and I rent it to the next person. I have a waiting list of three people. You know, so um, they pay on time. Except for I got one guy who hasn't paid. The other ones pay on time. Um, and so it, it requires literally, I mean, I, I think if I add it up, it'd be, it'd be less than two hours a month I spend on that facility. Um, and so, you know, and even counting my boots on the ground person, uh, I would say we spent four hours or five hours a month dealing with that facility and that's it. Um, so I don't need a ton of money out of that. You know, I, I, it is doing what it's supposed to do. It's cash flowing and it's, it's, it's increasing in value. As Stacy said, I'm value adding in the sense that I've raised the rents, you know, basically 20% across the board. Um, I lost one person who was also actually moving out anyway, but I filled that unit. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what, what does that person want from their investment? Um, and for me, I like, um, I like investments um, that don't require a ton of time that do make us money and continue to grow over time. And so that's why we're in self storage. That's why we're in short term rentals. And so, and then another thing is that it just offered the opportunity of education to you. Mm -hmm. So, because like, yeah. you know, getting in and buying something that's small, I mean, and just learning how it is. I mean, that's more, there's more value than that than, than, you know, most other things anyway. So I think yeah, we should I, add I'm that a, to the list. 
yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a risk averse person, generally speaking. And so the fact that I was able to buy that facility, the small Tennessee facility, and kind of learn how things work, because you can read how everyone else does it, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do it that way. I mean, I think the way that Stacy and Pete do it is fantastic. And I've, you know, mimicked many of the, the things that they've done and do. Um, but there's a few things I've done a little bit different because it works better for us. Um, but yeah, getting in and buying that facility um, and helping me learn on a small investment that didn't, that if it goes wrong, I'm not, I'm not going to die on. Uh, you mess up on an SBA loan, things go bad, right? And so my obviously goal is to, to learn how to do the, learn how to run a facility well, and then value add the SBA one. And then three years later, um, cause you have to keep the SBA loan for three years before, or you pay a, a stiff penalty to, um, to refinance earlier than that. So after three years, we'll see what the interest rate is at. We'll see what the property is worth. We'll see if we want to refinance and pull money out of it. We'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You should definitely be able to, de to double the value of that property though. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Back when I brought it to you way back, you know, a long time ago now, you know, uh, you said, I think you should offer on this. And I said, I think I should too. And then, and then I did. And then it took forever to get to the, across the finish line, but we did. Um, and you know, now, now we're there, we're done with it and that's good. Um, and now it's just a matter of taking the next 90 days and, um, you know, uh, um, tightening it up, uh, making it look better, uh, on the book side. I mean, as far as cosmetically, if you've ever been in middle Florida, it just, it's just sand and, and concrete. So it's not going to look better in that regard. And that's fine because nobody cares about that. They care. Do they, is there stuff there and can they pay for it? Yes. And yes. Okay, great. That's good. Good. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming and hanging out with us for today. I'm going to just wrap it up, you know, because we uh, are at the end and uh, I've, yeah, I think everybody in the, in the uh, coaching program appreciates your story. So if, if, uh, if Matt can do it, anybody can do it, right? He started with a small facility and now he's already on his third one. And how long have you been doing this for now? Um, I think I'm 15 months in and uh, we've got three facilities purchased in 15 months. Um, and what's your goal you know, for it? What's your goal for the rest of the year? I want to have my goal is to have a uh, 500 doors in five years from start. That's kind of what we start. That's what I that was when I started back, you know, a year ago when I started, I want to buy 100, 100 doors a year. Um, and so that's my goal is to have 500 doors in, after five years. Okay. Yeah. So slow and steady wins the race. You're on the mm -hmm. right track. You'll get it. Yeah. And with, it our, with our uh, life, I don't know. All I know is what my next two years look like. I don't know anything past that. And so uh, I, I like to do two and three year goal blocks. Um, but I also know like, you know, as you mentioned, there's folks, you know, investing in self storage from abroad, it's doable. Um, make sure you have access to a notary that will make things much better and save you a lot of money. Uh, but if you do go for it, I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. And, with technology the way it is now um, one person asked how do i verify that my uh, uh boots on the ground person is, is doing something and that's where i do have my my catch my um, safety net is my uncle living down the road so he did the interview for me he knows these people and so i can easily send my boots on the ground person to do blank whatever it is right and then three hours later i can send my uncle to see if it was done so uh thankfully we're not to the point yet of me having to question this individual um, but if I, if, and when, you know, it's important to keep iron sharpening iron. So I'm going to do that. I'll send them up there and make sure these things are getting done. Um, um, and so we'll go from there. We'll, we'll, um, make sure that he's doing his job and that I'm doing my job in the sense that I'm paying him and taking care of him, um, and valuing his opinion and listening to things that he's saying, cause he's seen that he's seen the facility much more than I have. So, no, I'll meet him, I'll meet him this weekend face to face and that, that'll hopefully, uh, create some continuity between us as well. Well, and I got asked today in my coaching calls, like, do you ever buy any facilities sight unseen? And I'm like, I think about it. I'm like, yeah, I actually have bought a couple of them because they all look the same, honestly. Right. You know, well, so it's not well, like, it's yeah. like a storage facility is so bad, you know, it's just. Yeah. Well, the ones, the ones that look really fancy and pretty, we're not buying anyway, right, Stacy? So that's, right, <laughs> okay, exactly. great. I, I, mean, I don't want yeah, those. Exactly. I can't afford those. Uh, nope. No, thank you. Right, so yeah. I'll buy the ugly one that the same owners had for 12 years and never raised the rent. And I'll buy that from him and be, or him or her and be happy with it and then raise the rents in a year and go with it. There you go. I like it. All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. All right. I'll see you tomorrow on the mastermind. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You bet. Okay, everybody else, thank you for hopping on. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.